and welcome back to another episode of the Caffeinated Librarians. We're missing Ben again, but hopefully he'll show up for this episode at some point. And I think that would be great because he's got a lot of really cool opinions about movies and we need him. <laughs> <laughs> we need you. <laughs> so, I don't uh, think he's coming. Huh? I don't think he's coming. <gasps> Is that enough of our shenanigans? Oh, he's yeah. done with us. Yeah. The coffee shop takes priority. How dare it. I mean, this is the caffeinated librarian, so, you know, someone's got to have the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so for today's episode, we're going to finish off uh, Shakespeare's uh, birthday month by just talking about some of our favorite contemporary uh, Shakespearean films. And uh, who wants to start us off? <gasps> Simona. <laughs> what do you got, Simona? Simona comes prepared. I, I have to or I'll forget. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, uh, three of my films are definite Shakespeare retellings. The fourth is kind of iffy, but it has Shakespeare-esque themes, so I'm counting it. So, um, these are all Hindi language um, films because I've watched them multiple times, so I know enough about them, I feel comfortable talking about them. Someone is way more cultured than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the first one is um, Om Kara. Um, it was released in 2006, and it's essentially a retelling of Othello. Um, and it's, a, it's the second film in this uh, Shakespeare trilogy. The, um, I think the first one was um, Makbul, which is based on Macbeth, but I've never watched that film, so I can't really say too much on it. Um, but Omkara, it, it's pretty good. So Omkara is the, um, the main character. He's the Othello figure in this story. And it's um, and he's a half caste um, criminal, like for lack of a better term, and he falls in love with this woman named Dolly, who's the I never know if it's Desdemona, Desdemona. De, I never how you know you're supposed to really say her name, but that's who she is. I, especially the first D is silent. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's because you said that was such a straight face that you really had her going. It took her, it took her a couple seconds. I did look at it too, and then I saw the curve, and I was like, <laughs> I think I've heard it as Desdemona. I'm not sure though. We'll go with Desdemona <laughs> for for lack of a better. So he falls in love with um, Dolly, and she's from a very prominent family. Of course, the father despises Omkara because he calls him like a half-caste. The caste system is pretty big in India. They get married, and um, from that moment on is when things start to unravel. And it follows pretty much follows the trajectory of the play, only it's set in a modern um, Indian context. Um, but it's really good. Unfortunately, we don't have it in the system, but I think it might be on Amazon Prime. Uh, and should I just read out all the other ones, or do you all want to like name one? Why don't we all just go around table this whole okay. thing? Okay, so that was my first one, <laughs> on car. So my, um, I think, top, top pick of uh, Shakespeare contemporary movies is 10 Things I Hate About You. It's um, based off of uh, Taming of the Shrew. And what I like about it is that it's like the 90s, nostalgia teen movie but it also has julia styles as um veronica i think her name as veronica yes and um heath ledger plays the um oh i don't remember the character's name which is awful but he's <laughs> the he's the character in shakespeare's play who um like essentially like in the play he falls in love with veronica even though she's shrewish and doesn't want to follow the rules of men in society um but in this movie they take it a different turn whereas heath heath ledger's character is like it's on a bet that he can't get veronica to go to um, petruchio petruchio thank you thank you simona Simona, amanda (gasps) (laughs) <laughs> because Sorry. we're sitting next to each other. It is. It is. I'm, I apologize. Anyway. Um, it's a cooler name anyways. <laughs> well, you know, I can't go wrong with that. Um, and, and he, it's like, he pursues her more out of like a, a, a bet that he can't get her to prom or anything like that. And shenanigans ensue. And it's really, it's, it's a really fun movie. I like also, um, how uh, uh, 
Jason Gordon, uh, Gordon Lovett, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph Gordon, Gordon Lovett, Don John himself. Wow. Yeah. You guys like jumped down my throat with that correction. Oh, I, I was I was waiting to bring <laughs> up. Uh, was that a was that a uh, jump down? I don't think that was a what, jump what, down. What's his Apple TV series? It's like Mister Something. Mr. I I laugh about it all the time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem real. <laughs> um, and he's he pre- he wants to. He's the pursuer of of uh, Bianca. Bianca is. is I don't even know. If I don't remember the actress's name who plays Bianca in Ten Things I Hate About You, um, but you know she it portrays the the ditzy entitled, you know teen that she is in the play, and um, you really can't go wrong with uh, Joseph Joseph. And all she Gordon wants is the stupid jock guy who was also in. Uh, oh, isn't he? In the one with Mackay Pfeiffer, he plays a, the douchebag in both I I Shakespeare adaptations. He was probably typecast because he did a really good job at playing the douchebag in Ten Things I Hate About. Yeah, and he looks like a douche. Like, look at his hair; he looks like a douche. I, I really like the dad in that movie. He's just like deranged and is just like constantly screaming at his daughters well. not to be pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, in in the play itself, he the father is. The father character is adamant that Bianca can't get married unless Veronica gets married. It's not Veronica; it's Catherine. Why? Why did I call her Veronica? No one corrected me. See, I didn't. I didn't know. It's Catherine. That was one of the plays I actually did not study in college. Really? Yes, my teacher wanted us to do instead of that one, Twelfth Night. Okay, her name is Catherine. It's Catherine and Bianca. (laughs) I don't know why I said Veronica. I wouldn't have I known be, any different. Yeah, I, I should be ashamed of myself since I love Taming of the Shrew. I actually have um, the Elizabeth Taylor version with Richard Burton, which is fantastic. Is that yeah. one Kiss Me Kate? Or? No, it's oh, okay. called Taming of the Shrew. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think Kiss Me Kate was earlier. Or I should say later. Um, But... Yeah, that's what I have to say about 10 Things I Hate About You. My favorite scene in the movie. Good movie, man. Yeah. I mean, classic. Yeah. Just the, classic uh, teen The one movie. with on the, where he's dancing on the bleachers. Is yeah. It's like ingrained in my mind. I remember yeah. being a yeah. little girl and being like, I want a boyfriend yeah. like that. <laughs> Who wants to dance on the bleachers? Yes. <laughs> Cause mischief. Yeah. Who gets paid to take me out? Or God, or right? Yeah. Well, maybe not that part. Uh, <laughs> I'll make me feel bad. And R.I.P. Heath Ledger. Yeah, no. I don't. I don't know if that's like one of Heath Ledger's first films in um, American, um, in American movies, since he is Australian, an Australian actor. Was was, was an Australian actor. <laughs> I don't because uh, I don't think um, a Knight's Tale. I think a Knight's Tale came after yes. Ten Things yeah, I Hate definitely. About You. He did The Patriot, and then a Knight's yeah. Tale, Monsters Ball. Like three hits right now. He was in Monsters other. Ball? Apparently. He played a character Is... called Sonny Grotowski. Oh, I don't know that movie. Oh, that's not the isn't that the one Halle Berry won an Oscar for? Yeah. Yes. Oh. That's that really yeah, the one with Halle Berry. That movie and, uh, is hard to watch. I've never seen it. But hey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that's one of those movies that you're like, all right, you saw it, you got it in your your repertoire. You don't need it anymore. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Just file it under. Yeah. Watched it. Was uncomfortable. I, thought I, it was all right. It's all yeah. good. I, I just watched a Thirty Rock episode this morning where Tracy was in an Oscar bait movie called Hard to Watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! It goes in there with like Joker. It's like uncomfortable to watch. It was a good watch. Yeah. Put in the file. Don't need to see it again. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. But ten things I hate about you, man. Love that is movie. not one of those movies. No. That is a movie you watch over and yeah, over. Yeah, that's, that's a breeze watch. That, that is yeah. A, yeah. Woke and up, I think we do have Sunday. it in our collection still. Yeah. I think we do have it in our oh, collection definitely. still. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. yeah no it was like, if it gets that. scratched up, we're replacing it right yeah, away. We'll replace yeah. That. <laughs> it's a classic <laughs> at this point, you know? Got to change the sticker on it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. Soon. Right? <laughs> no, I, I was, I was, this is just an aside. I was listening to the radio and it says, we're going to go for a throwback hit. And I'm like, oh, okay, 80s or 90s. And they said like 2005, 2006. I said, when did that become throwback? What was the song? I don't remember. But I was like, when did that? <laughs> that was really disappointing as well. 
I was playing a, I did a gaming session with my anime club kids yesterday. And uh, one of them told me, it was a, supposed to be this like joking game where you write a pun. And I made a Jeffrey Rush joke because the name Jeffrey came up and I was like always in a rush. But I put in parentheses so they could understand what it meant. And they're like, man, get your 90s references out of here. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's not a 90s reference. He was in Pirates of the Caribbean. She's like, it's a 2001 <laughs> reference. <laughs> Very different era. I was like, Why I know I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, uh. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Amanda, it's okay. I'm right there with you. <laughs> wow. First song listed on the soundtrack for 10 Things I Hate About You. One week. Oh, oh bare naked ladies. ladies. Do you ever remember? Did <laughs> My you ever favorite song watch, uh, of theirs. That's a good one. There's also a good version of um, the Cheap Trick song, right? Uh, Creep. Which one? No. Uh, no. That, it's, that's uh, that's Radiohead. Never mind. Yeah. Um, Don't do that. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you know, the, it's the, gonna be on here. The I girl just... with the short hair singing it. Blonde girl, short hair. I mean, in, not in the movie. I want you to want me. Yeah, that. Yes, one. there we go. Yeah, I have to think. Yeah, about a, it. A, a, yes, a, that's a good, monster. Song. A good version of the Cheap Trick song. Yeah. Yeah. What's the Cheap Trick song? I want you to want me. I mean, Cheap Trick song is never, fine too. Have you never? You would I know want, it if you heard it. I want you to want me. No, honestly, a I lot of songs me. I know, but I couldn't <laughs> tell you who sings it, what it's like. I just listened to it like. <laughs> no, I, yeah, but I, I'm just like that. So to, to be, I know I disappointed you earlier, but it's like I, I'm sorry. So we're gonna continue. So we're making Simona mixtapes. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> After this, we're, you ever we're seen gonna play in your car. Yes. Cool. We, that that's what we should do for our next episode. We should make Simona. <laughs> each of us makes Simona a mix CD, and then we explain why <laughs> we chose <laughs> certain songs. Honestly, that'd be a pretty fun episode. Yeah, that would. We I have would, a few openings in May, so I, I, <laughs> I would feel so loved yeah. because only one person ever made me. I never got a mixtape because you know it just never happened. Well, I never got a mixtape either. But so I got a mixed CD, so like, I felt loved. So I would feel very loved. I don't even know, I don't do even know to how week. to make a mixtape now. I just yeah. make Spotify playlists. Yeah. <laughs> just look here. Let me. Uh... Yeah. Let me cue this up for you. Something. Yeah. <laughs> but like a CD, we could do. We could okay, do. So, we could, I have nice. a playlist for uh, my D&D characters. Too. Nice. Yeah. My friend just puts on YouTube. He has a playlist of just YouTube, like, ambient, ambient. <laughs> <laughs> What's your music in the background? <laughs> my friend Dalton used to make me, like, mix CDs, like, every week. It was something new, like, every time. I'm like, you're just illegally downloading music. And he's just like, yeah. Well, <laughs> was like, that was the game back then. It was. I mean, Napster. No one else did. Lime no. wine. Yeah, uh, lime we get better than Napster. We never use any of these services. <laughs> no, of course not. Weird. No. Yeah. yeah we go, get all our stuff at the library. We're, yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. That's uh-huh. the story, and we're sticking to it. <laughs> Join the anime club. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Shakespeare adaptations. Uh, Forbidden Planet. That's the Tempest. Ooh. And it, you know, it's a, it becomes a goofy 50s B sci fi movie. Uh, it's got, I think, the first appearance of Robbie the Robot, so that's always fun. You know, Robbie the Robot. You'll I know, Rob. Yeah. I know, I wasn't looking that one. I was looking oh, up okay. the movie. <laughs> I don't know Robbie the Robot. Yeah, I don't think I know Robbie oh, the Robot. Oh, he's cool. He's got, like, goofy arms and, like, a. Danger. Yeah, Robbie Robinson the Robot. Danger. This guy. You've seen this design everywhere. They make a figure out of him like every yeah. year. Yeah, they they built him and they. Like, he's like a little. He's got stuff. these arms that are just like that guy. <laughs> oh. I didn't know Forbidden yeah. Planet was a adaptation. I didn't know Tempest. until I looked at the yeah. list of Shakespearean adaptations. I really like the Tempest. That's that's a wild play. Yeah. Shakespeare's later stuff gets so weird. But it's fun. Well, oh, yeah. And it's considered one of his... A, we, like, I remember that that play did not receive as much love as many of his other ones. But it is, I, I do agree with you. It is kind of a... It's a fun ride. <laughs> I think it's like one of his underrated plays. It's, it's really one of the ones that's, one. that's... They say like Titus Andronicus is one of his like mm-hmm. weakest ones, but so is The Tempest. I think those are the two I that people are like, the, the Tempest weakest. is regarded as weak at all. Ooh! Here we go. No, like, I, like, legitimately, I, I think it's usually credited as like his last one. It's his last one, but that's song. why a lot of people said it didn't feel like 
It was one of the ones where it's like it didn't feel like one of his. Maybe he didn't write I don't it. Know. He was moving in that direction with the Stop Roman Simona. <laughs> Why, Simona? I just felt like throwing Simona it in there. Stir the pot. Why? You always stir the pot, I Simona. Didn't know <laughs> you chaos bringer. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of weird adaptations of The Tempest, too. There's uh, Prospero's Books, which I haven't seen, but I think that one's one of the weirdo Brits, uh, either Greenaway or Jarman. There was um, there was also a more recent adaptation of The Tempest with Helen Merrim. Yeah, I want to like that there one more than I do. There was a 2010 one was the yeah. last one. Of the uh, Julie Taymor, mm. I don't know. I, something about I, the CG effects didn't translate well for me. I and mean, I didn't see it, and I wanted to, and I'm really bummed that I didn't get to see it yet. I'm also not big on how they handle Caliban in that one. That's yeah. a loaded character to begin with. And it is a loaded, yeah. A lot yeah. can go wrong with depicting Caliban, and mm-hmm. I think a lot goes wrong in that one. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It's like I've never heard so much love for the Tempest, and it's so much nice. It's nice. What's well, the Helen Mirren one? It's, it's just, uh, it's, just called it's called the Tempest. Tempest. Oh, yeah, a lot yeah, of movies adaptation. just called oh. the Tempest. I went to go look up like just now to see like what are one of the adaptations you were talking about. I'm like the Tempest movie adaptations, and it's literally just a list of movies. I think there's one called the, the Tempest. <laughs> called the Tempest. That's like a modern day setting, and it's got Cassavetes and Gina Rollins. Oh, that guy's in it. I like that guy. Yeah. There's yeah. one that's just called Tempest. What what guy? The guy from uh, Blood Diamond. Oh, uh, we don't know I've his seen name. That movie. I don't know his name. That's a good movie. <laughs> it's not one I would normally watch on my own, but yeah, I'm it's not a to Shakespeare adaptation. I don't it think. I don't believe so. It's interesting because you could interpret a lot of things to Shakespeare's right. Like I said, I'm watching Breaking Bad. I'm on this last season. Every episode, I'm like. Shakespeare. <laughs> so we should actually we should get our weekly Shakespeare uh, weekly Breaking Bad update from you. Where are you? I'm on uh, episode five of season uh, episode seven of season five. Okay. Yeah, what it? Uh, what, it's got what very Walt Hamlet do? vibes going on. Yeah, what just <laughs> happened? Well, what nonsense is? I'm Walt not gonna watch recently? it. So go ahead. Okay, so Walt's being an a hole as usual. And his wife is utterly terrified. And she just gave him the ultimatum. She's like, I will be your partner. But the kids are not coming back into this household. So he's got like this baby baby. And then his son, who's like 16, 17. I didn't realize also that the show took place within entirely within a year. Oh, like, really? It's like a year Because one of the episodes, oh, yeah, he's celebrating yeah, his 51st that. birthday. And they're like, oh, remember this time last year you got diagnosed with cancer? And I was just like, oh. also, his wife is like, man, I can't wait for cancer to come back and kill you. And I'm just like, I feel the same. Yeah, did, did he buy Flynn the sports car yet? His I saw the same where he bought him. I'm just like, but you said not to do that. And I'm like. And they drive up, dubsteps, flaring. That whole episode's amazing. I love when Jesse comes over mm-hmm. for dinner and he's just like, yo, that this was the is last like, episode I saw was the dinner. Bomb, yo. I was like, I've been there. I've been there with Jesse. Wait, and you're on season five? Last season. And, and they, he, Jesse just came over for dinner? Yeah. Jesse has yeah, been, well, only Jesse been in the house. Skyler until like towards the end. Really? It was that late? She knows of Jesse from the past, but she. Well, I gotta be careful with what I say then because I'm mixing. Stuff up. I don't want to spoil anything for you. Don't spoil anything. Don't spoil anything. It's don't all Shakespearean spoil. right now, and yeah. I'm getting like some mad like Hamlet vibes but because I it like was supposed to be like it is. Uh, there's a lot of like it is supposed to be Shakespeare technically. I don't know which one because I haven't like gone and looked at the interviews because I don't want to really know. I want to figure it out. Vince but I'm Vince like in rocks in interviews. He's just this very polite Midwestern guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's Aww. just he did one recently where he was like. You know, God bless the folks at Zoom. And I know they're tr- working their hardest, but she Willikers, right in a season of television over Zoom, sure was hard. <laughs> and I hear that uh, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul will be making an appearance in the new. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah new Better Call Saul season. Oh, the last season. I think it's the last season yeah. they're it doing. The we want. I, that's kind of why I'm binging it because I really like Saul and I'm trying really hard. Mm. To get to him, I'm I like, saw, who is this man? I, I saw a really good uh, tweet recently that was like, me watching Breaking Bad. Ha ha. Walt should totally blow up that orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> me watching Better Call Saul. No, Jimmy, you can't cheat on your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. 
But I just got past the scene where this kid caught the tarantula and they killed the kid. And the next step, and I'm on the last. That's a, such a great episode. Yo, Brian Jesse was like, Blanny. Brian was like, I forgot yeah. what this kid had any significance, and then it came up at the end, and they're just like, oh, and they're like, no, and I'm just yeah. over here like, it's I'm like, in his defense, yeah. this is the criminal business. He did the right thing. That kid could have been a witness. <laughs> he could have gone I home. Don't, I don't think he did the right thing. Yeah. I'm gonna go from on a criminal like, standpoint. From a criminal standpoint. <laughs> Are you saying that killing that kid was the right thing to do? <laughs> they literally said on the news that the kid was motor, like, you know, on his little, like, dirt bike in the back of his house. He's going to go to his mom and say, hey, mom, I saw a bunch of people with lots and lots of, like, rope or whatever in the backyard. <laughs> he wouldn't have even known what was going on. Yeah, but then he would have told his mom. <laughs> you know, it's There's funny. There's a guy in a black hat who kind of matches the description of Heisenberg. <laughs> I remember watching that episode with my mom like live when it aired <laughs> and i remember saying after that opening where you just see the tarantula and the kid or whatever i was like that kid's and got I said, no fear i said what the heck was that opening that was That's the worst was opening like. i've ever seen and then this is what happens when you doubt Breaking Bad. I'm a big fan of the goofy opening thing. I called it though. I called it though. I was like, oh, that kid's gonna die. (laughs) All the stuff with the bear in season two. They, it, it, every opening of season two is about that goddamn teddy bear. Right? And like, what's going on with this? What's so going on? Just get to the it. The plane like, blew up ahead of them. Yeah. yeah. Walk like causes a plane crash. I, I enjoy that Saul still wears the ribbon throughout the entire show for the stupid airplane. Yeah. FYI, Katie and I feel so left out of this conversation. <gasps> I'm you guys sorry. You really should watch Breaking Bad, even though we just told you what happens. I would I never no, normally watch I, this show. I don't really have an interest, but I will say Peaky Blinders is giving me Macbeth vibes. Hi, Peaky Blinders, where are you in it? Um, Pe- weekly, weekly Peaky Blinders <laughs> update next. Where I'm, are we on Peaky Blinders? I'm at the part where, um, uh, so Grace died. <gasps> Spoiler alert, I don't think they've seen it. I actually want to see it, but I don't mind. I usually forget spoilers in like five seconds. Okay, Okay. well, I I won't forget, but at the same time, it's fine. I'm sorry, Amanda. It's not a show I'm super invested in watching in, but I do at some point watch it, but you're good. So you're at the beginning of season three. I am. And uh, they're doing business with uh, the Russian mafia. Or oh, there's mafias in yep. oh the yes. Yes. Yeah. There's mafia. I, didn't know, I just thought it was like I saw a little trailer and I didn't see any of the lines and I thought it was just about the prohibition era and that's all I thought. No, it was. No, mafia. no, 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 no. Um, and you know, Tommy Shelby finally has like the big house and the money and the wealth that he was trying to get with the, like the last two seasons. Now he's going into business with. The Russian mafia and so, I'm like why, why you are cool. where you want to be and you're gonna ruin it. You have so much more. Oh, I know, I know. All right, Walt, well, calm down. <laughs> you don't need more. <laughs> it's like his downfall is gonna come in uh in some massive way, and it's going to remind me of Macbeth. I just like Tom Hardy's character. Tom He's the best in the show. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's a scene where he meets no. um, the Sicilian guy, and I love it. He's, like, finishing a prayer. He's so badass because, like, so, his eyes are closed, and, like, he's like, wait, one more minute. But basically, it's like, I love he says, like, you mean nothing to me, and his eyes are just closed. And, go, and then he well, goes, Tom, okay. Tom Hardy is an actor, and he's a beautiful man he's as well. Beautiful. He is a very beautiful man. <laughs> Oh, does it I thought the show just had right? Adrian Brody. Brody who does it? Does it? Is he, does he no. come back? I no, thought he I just was for I, season I two. Oh, I have no idea. Like oh, my okay. sister started that's, watching that's it, and then she got disgusted with the way the, the women are treated. That's okay though. It's the 1920s everywhere. So I mean, she just got disgusted and stopped watching it. But no, Alfie Solomon's is probably the best character. He steals every scene that he's in. He really does. It's yeah. very That's true, though. Uh, yeah, so not right. only is Cillian Murphy in it, but Tom Hardy. Just... Yes. Killian Murphy is, is... Killian. Sorry, Cillian Killian. I think we, we established this it's last Killian. week. Killian. <laughs> yeah, when you jump down our throats about the pronunciation of the name. <laughs> Starts flipping um, tables. So yeah. excited to see that man <laughs> chew on I am become death destroyer of worlds. <laughs> I think like the, my my favorite scene so far is when uh, the Russian Duchess in, of season three is when the Russian Duchess like tells 
like makes the offhanded comment that you're already back in business and I guess you really didn't like love your wife all that much and he like flips and grabs her and is like my wife is next to me right now and she's telling me that not to trust the Russians and I'm like yeah I was like you made that mistake I gotta tell you I the this Russian this Russian woman Mm -hmm. I love her I love her character so much yeah she's insane though she is insane there's in the last episode there's a line that Tommy says to her that is just like like that's a line I want to say to somebody one day. You'll you'll I won't spoil it for you because it's when it's you too retire. Good. Yeah. When you retire, have that epic moment. Oh, it's not that kind of line. Oh, okay. It's not that. What kind of what's line. what's the line? Because now I'm curious. Well, it, it, I mean, is it gonna the, get the, rid? Is it gonna like spoil everything, or can you say it and not give it? All right. Well, she's leaving. Yeah. She's going back <laughs> to Russia, and and he's talking to her, and she says that he she has. She has a, a guy there. The whole scene is set up so nicely. And because uh, there's stuff that they're exchanging. Right. And um, and uh, she says that there's a man waiting for her in Russia or something. Mm-hmm. And he just says, poor man. But he's like lighting a cigarette. And he's just so nonchalant about yeah. it. Yeah. And he just kind of like walks away. It's the whole, the way the whole scene comes together. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's really like, I'm like, damn, he's like, he's just yeah. quick. Yeah. Uh, well, Tommy Jones or Tommy Jones, Tommy Shelby. Uh, is definitely my favorite character in the entire series. Tom Jones, so. that's the uh, that's not his, unusual. The Welsh thing. singer. Yeah. You can understand. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes, he's Welsh. It's the Carlton Banks, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and what's new, Pussycat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my mom loves Tom Jones, so I'm just going to put that out there. But Lewis. excellent, excellent show. I'm glad that you are continuing with it. Yeah. Everyone should watch Beaky Blinders. I mean, just a great cast. It's also going on its last season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, yeah in June. June 10th. Well, so. I think the final season's already done. Yeah. It aired on the BBC already. Right, and it's going to air well, on Netflix. On. It's going to be put on Netflix on in June, June, June 10th. 10th. Oh, yep. it's on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the whole series is on Netflix. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. it's like an That's how I'm able to watch it. Check it out. Well, I started watching because my youngest sister was watching, but she got so disgusted with the way the women are being treated. She was like, "They only fill one purpose," and she she just got so disgusted she just stopped. But that's but that's his, that's historically know, speaking, nineteen twenties anywhere. I know, but she just she just like she's like she just had enough. She was like, "I've had enough." What about <laughs> Polly and Ada? They, I, they we, yeah, I mean, we probably didn't get that far, but um, but yeah. I just liked watching the Sicilian parts. Because, like, my people. And I wanted to. But when um, Adrian Brody starts talking, because he's always the. And I was like, what are you saying? And I asked my mom, how is it? She was like, it's terrible. As she walked away. Well, he's, he's like, he's like American, American Sicilian. Yeah, yeah but there, I know there actually are Sicilian actors, because the way they speak Sicilian, you know that they're native speakers of the language. But the one of the lines I loved was, is like, the Irish are like Sicilians. They never forget a grudge. That's See? true. See, Amanda? That's the true. Connection? I'm not a big grudge holder, but I will remember things. I'm the same. And I will remember them. <laughs> Just like Shakespeare. Just, yes, bringing it so, all back. So, I mean, Lou, what's your favorite? Or, or do you have a favorite modern no, contemporary? I don't, I, don't, I don't really have a favorite. That's a cop-out. I don't really have a favorite modern adaptation. Cop-out. Clearly, it's Breaking um, Bad. Lou just loves <laughs> all of them. I love everything, exactly. But O, oh, I, I just remember watching O oh, like a, like several times. Also, Julia Stiles. Yeah. Interesting. She had wow. a big career in that. She, yeah. did, she did three adaptations. She also did um, Hamlet, which is set like... Um, Oh, where? she was in the 2000s Hamlet with Ethan Hawke? I believe oh, so, yeah. yes. Oh. She was also in there, too. I didn't even know that that was a movie. It's, <laughs> Hamlet's a film student in it. And oh, yeah? It, he's about as insufferable as that sounds. I, <laughs> I can make this joke. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Just insufferable. <laughs> but O, o was... I, I mean, it's been so long since I watched it. I remember it being, you know, extreme and over the top. Josh Hartnett was in it. Um, which I don't know why that makes it extreme or over the top. But uh, there's a, a scene where Mackay Pfeiffer is is just like bouncing a basketball and and he's just like bouncing and bouncing and he's staring at Julia Stiles talking with the douchebag from <laughs> Ten Things I Hate About You mm-hmm. and Josh Hartnett is making it is is poisoning his brain making him think that uh, um, making him think that. Julia Stiles is going to be sleeping with the douchebag from 10 Things I Hate About You. Mm-hmm. We should find out his actual name. Um, 
And uh, I think it was. And then he, he's like pounding the basketball and everything like that. And then he goes and does a dunk, and the backboard breaks. But everyone's like so shocked. Oh wait, no, I think they're shocked because he ends up like pushing a kid and something like that. But that's symbolism, like over the top, like the pounding of the basketball. His mental state is starting to shatter. Agree. Then he dunks and he yeah. literally shatters the board. Yeah, agree. It was just a little ridiculous. You see, I'm learning. Like these kids, these Keegan. people are Andrew in high school. Keegan. Andrew Keegan. Andrew yeah, Keegan. Guy. He was the one that was in the other one as well. Yeah. yeah it's just you know they're high school kids. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It was yeah. too serious. It was very serious. Are you yeah. saying that high school kids cannot be serious and that the issues that they face on a daily basis are trivial? Yes. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Entirely. Yes. Yeah. I'm always chilling for euphoria. I do love show, euphoria. So, yeah, yeah. The things going I, on in euphoria. <laughs> I don't need to watch you for it to know what's going on in euphoria. Yeah. <laughs> euphoria, man. That talk about talk about drama. My goodness. But you know what always gets talk me with that show, like the, the clips I've seen, is. No high schooler dresses that way. Is that, that that's kind of like um, a joke about it too? Yeah. They're like, uh, I know, uh, I know, with girls. crop tops. Oh, I've seen yeah. them in the man pants. I, I think, I mean, I think some I, kids nowadays might. I well, I went when I went to high school. I would see girls come in dressing like you know, modestly, I guess if you want to call it. Go into the bathroom, then come out with you know crop tops and mini skirts and my school yeah, did this so thing it's... essentially a lot of girls got away with like there was like the rule of not having like spaghetti strap like tank tops mm-hmm. but so many girls got and like, like they walked in front of the vice principal and he didn't care yeah. Euphoria High School is a place where I don't think we've ever seen one teacher. So it's in an yeah. alternate yeah. dimension. Yeah. 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 We see the principal once, and he just gets owned by Cat. Yeah. <laughs> the show is not an accurate portrayal of the life of teachers having yeah. to deal with these horm- excessively hormones. But I am surprised <laughs> they showed that in high school. Because I remember, like, there was one of my high school. I, I never watched the film, but I know enough about. Showed what in high school? Oh. oh, oh! I didn't watch it. I, yeah. I mean, I watched it while I was in high school, but I didn't watch it in school. Oh no, we watched. Yeah, they it. wouldn't one show that. English There's classes. like a rape scene in it too. I wouldn't. Yeah. No, they actually. Yeah. One of my English classes, they watched <laughs> yeah. it. Oh yeah. Yeah. They probably had to do. A, they probably the sign. They did. They do the skipping thing. They're like, oh, hold on, guys. <laughs> yeah, well. oh, yeah. Oh. My uh. Probably would not be. Uh, my I, I took uh, film and lit my senior year of high. No, my junior year of high school. And uh, she, we j- had just watched The Graduate, and she wanted to show us the scene from, um, was it Old School? Where he, like, falls in the pool, and then it's like they're, they're redoing that part in The Graduate. And, um, but, you know, there's a lot of other stuff in Old School she didn't want us to see, so she's, like, fast-forwarding it, trying to stand in front oh, of the TV. Oh, rookie mistake. This is yeah. the wrong movie. <laughs> and, uh, but, like, she didn't realize, like, where she was standing. Like, she was a little too far back, so, like, everybody could see it from, like, this <laughs> angle. And we're just like, well, we literally just saw everything that you didn't want us to see. But she's cool, though. Miss Bear's the best. She knows she's the best. At least she um, tried. So points yeah. for effort. Yeah. You know, Look, sometimes a it's a trial effort. and error effort. You brought up The Graduate. Uh, I, I watched it, like, some point last year. Uh, it rewatched it. But there's this amazing shot in it where Dustin Hoffman's at the zoo, and he's all sad. And the camera zooms in on him. And then at the last second, it swerves. And it starts zooming in on a monkey in the background. And it is one of the funniest shots I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't remember that part. I'll have to rewatch. The during graduate. one of the many uh, Scarborough Fair yeah. scenes. Yeah. That's a good movie. Yeah. I like that movie, actually. Um, but that's not Shakespeare. No. I do have the only other thing that I'll, I, I'm, I'll talk about, I'll talk about when we go around again. Um, but it's something I've wanted to talk about for a long time. My heart. But I'll let you go first. Because you haven't gone yet. Oh. Um, I've mentioned it before in the previous ones. I'm a huge fan of Titus Andronicus and Anthony Hopkins with Jessica Lang and Alan Cummings. Uh Alan Cummings, sorry. Uh were in this nineteen ninety film nineteen ninety nine film called Titus. And I could rewatch that movie over and over again because Anthony Hopkins, once again, I've just started watching the Amazon Prime King Lear. Yeah. He plays crazy so well he he plays the the title character titus and jessica i'm a a huge fan of jessica lang and she plays tamara the queen of the goths and alan cumming plays saturninus who's like the king or the emperor currently that that titus was like 
I didn't vote for you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't vote for anybody. <laughs> um, all of which are fantastic characters and Alan Cumming I really I really like him too I love I, you know I love Alan Cumming and everything that he does mm-hmm. he's just a great actor I don't know who that is you should know the, you should know you should know Spy Kids okay. let me, let me he was he, he was in Spy Kids he was in Josie that and the guy. Pussycats oh that guy he has tiny glasses yeah that guy <laughs> I think he plays he, White from Josie and the Pussycats. I, I believe he was on uh, acclaimed uh, CBS drama, The Good Wife. <laughs> he's a great. He was, yes. He's a great Scottish oh, he was actor. In he was. He's in a lot of famous movies. Like he's got one of those faces when you see him, you're like, I know who you are. It's that guy. Yeah, he's um, a really famous Scottish actor. Who hardly ever gets to perform with his Scottish accent, and when he does, when he when he is, I oh, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> uh, like uh, concierge who comes on to Tom Cruise towards the end of it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's another one of those movies where I was like, all right, watched it, got it in the bank, <laughs> good to go. Don't need to watch it again. In the what movie was that? Eyes Wide Shut. Oh, messy. I see. I think that movie's pretty funny. <laughs> Maybe I should give it another shot. I was kind of young when I saw it too. I was like probably like 11 or 12 or something. So probably you shouldn't have watched it? Probably not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of movies I regretted watching as a child, but now as an adult, I'm like, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom probably shouldn't have shown me these movies. Yeah, um, I think I watched a lot of stuff without my mom knowing. Like if my mom knew what I was watching, she probably wouldn't have been okay with it. I think I watched Train Spotting like 50 times in high school. <laughs> I don't really know what was going on with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, anyways, Titus Andronicus is one of Shakespeare's first plays, if not the first play he ever put on. And a lot of people don't believe that Shakespeare wrote it. They thought they were written by his uh, rival, who once again, his name escapes me because... Christopher Marlowe. Thank you, Marlowe. Um, it is a, it's probably one of his, probably the most gory play that he's done. Uh, Titus Andronicus follows the story of a famous general who's mm-hmm. loved by the country and the, you know the emperor. And once the emperor dies, he has he's kind of put in charge of deciding who's going to be the next emperor out of the, the emperor's past two sons. Mm-hmm. One of the sons in which is going to marry, who is not married to his daughter yet, but is go- is planning on marrying his daughter. But his younger brother ends up taking it. And by nefarious means, because he's a butthole. <laughs> Throughout the entire movie, uh, Anthony Hot Jessica Lang plays the queen of the Goths, who Titus ends up killing her son mm-hmm. right in front of her. And it's just literally revenge back and forth between the two. And it's kind of like a, well, you should have expected revenge. And then she does revenge. And then he's like, I'm going to get revenge. And he does that by killing more of her sons and making her eat them. And it's a great scene because he comes she, in in a chef a outfit. It's so it's, funny. There, it, it's a whole pie He kills situation. her son, and then she kills his. And that then... happens in Game of Thrones. <laughs> when, oh, yeah, my God. <laughs> Arya, that's a... Well, then Tamara marries Saturninus, that's a the new emperor. Scene. It is. That's a great, great scene. Yeah. Her, she also has an illegitimate child with her lover? Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to describe it, but unfortunately, they're like, it, it's racist. He comes out dark-skinned, because her lover is also dark-skinned. And she's like, well, we can't have that around. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because they'll find out about her infidelity to the new emperor. Oh. That kind of makes sense. And yeah. also because they're racist. But like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but like didn't, she didn't like see that coming. You this know. is also in ancient Rome as well, and you're also looking at, um, it, you know, a time where if no one knew what you were doing, you wouldn't necessarily know what what your child would look like from that. They were also known for, you know, deformities were present. They would just drop them over a wall. Well, that was that was Sparta. That was yeah. in Sparta. Yeah, yeah, you know. sure. yeah. <laughs> Still. Yeah. Culture. <laughs> yeah. So that's so. that's that's how. So I hear you're going to talk about the historical accuracies of 300, right? It's not historically accurate. It's not. You mean that oh, the situation <laughs> happened? Yeah. Plays but fast the, and the way. Fast. 
I don't but they it. weren't that hot. And no. <laughs> no. That movie was just so gross. Like there was just, there was... That movie was great. Are you kidding? No, that was see, my I got school's to see mascot. Gerard Butler shirtless for the entire movie. Yeah, but it's also CGI. Mascots. He had a 14 pack. <laughs> you know, like, Comic book like accuracy. Physically impossible. <laughs> my school's mascot were the Spartans. And when 300 came out, it was over. And it was either Halo jokes or, or 300 Spartans. jokes. So every football game. Our crazy science teacher would go out shirtless and be like, tonight we dine and and then you say the school name instead of saying hell. So I hope so. Because <laughs> it's North Carolina and we don't want to say that either. <laughs> but, uh, but, the te- but the teacher shirtless was okay. Yeah, he was he was questionable or anything else. He, yeah. he was crazy, I guess. He got away with it. He whatever. <laughs> he just went at it. He wore a Spartan helmet and everything. I love I love the I guess part... as long as it's like the funny teacher and not, you know, the He's the funny teacher. Yeah. He was like the scrawny, yeah. skinny, yeah. like nerdy looking guy. Yeah. Yeah. I the my favorite part of three hundred is when the um the uh what the hell is he called? The emissary for the what are they, the Phoenicians? The Persians. The Persians, thank you. Comes and he's literally making fun of someone who and he's right in front of a gigantic well and I'm like, yeah. This is not gonna end well. Idiot. Why yeah. are you doing that? And I love yeah. when he looks back at his wife and she just gives and he goes, This is Spartan just like epically drop kick, kicks him into that well. Right in the chest. Um, right in the sternum. Yeah. So not historically accurate, but still it's fun. Badass. Yeah, it was pretty badass. <laughs> Anyways, um getting back to Titus and Jeronicus. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's a it's a very good rendition. I, I recommend it. It's a two hour, almost three hour long movie, but it is oh. nuts. And I think the cinematography of it is great. And I think the best part about the movie is that the illegitimate child is technically sent to death to be on the battlefield and is found by the uh, I forget exactly who it was. I don't. It was one of the soldiers that you meet in the beginning. And he, and it's always been left as a mystery in the play of whether the child survives or doesn't, but the movie mm-hmm. brings him back in this like super dramatic fashion. They have you in like the Coliseum and it looks like there's the play because the play turned the beginning of the movie, you see the Coliseum mm-hmm. and it looks like a play is being done in the middle, but then it turns into the movie and then it goes back to being, it, it's a, it, I, it's, it's super good. I'm not going to lie. I absolutely adore that movie. So, and I think it's super underrated because nobody has, I don't think, has done a movie. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I had never yeah. heard of it until just now. It's super, it's it's gory by Shakespeare standards. But if you don't mind a couple little, like, you know, if you've seen the South Park I actually episode. Have a, I, have a, I actually have a big problem with gore. It's not gory like that. Yeah. It's not like bloody gory. Like it's movies. just, uh, whatever. Or, or <laughs> Says the guy who's watching movie. Peaky Blinders yeah. and Breaking Bad. So, yeah. it's, not, it's just not for me. Yeah, no, no, come, no, no, no limb cutting. No, no none do of that. No. Don't want your women silenced. No. I see. <laughs> <laughs> can't write their names, can't speak their names. What's a girl to do? <laughs> so. Is that what happens what in the movie? They can't write their the names. The daughter ends up finding out the plot between the uh, brothers and the queen after mm-hmm. she's married into royalty. And she's like, oh, and they find out, so they have her. They cut off her hands they, and they cut out her tongue so that she can't. They speak. sexually assault her of in a in a minor term, mm-hmm. um, and of then course. to basically hide the whole thing that happened because she's Titus's pride and joy. Mm-hmm. Um, they deflower her and then they cut her hands off so she can't write down who did it, and they cut oh. out her tongue so she can't speak, and they leave mm-hmm. her in the woods with. Uh, Looking like a tree, essentially. They put like tree limbs oh, in her. I remember studies. seeing that scene, and that grossed me out so. It badly. is a very macabre, macabre but no, beautiful the... scene. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that whole tree limb thing. That was. It's because they wanted to shame her even further because they want to shame Titus and Titus just goes over the breaking point and yeah. comes in with a cute little chef outfit and he does a little dance <laughs> serving everybody their little people pies. <laughs> so, yep. yeah. Yep. That is so gross. I know a lot of people probably won't watch that movie, but I do recommend it because of its artistic value as well. I'm going to watch it now. Oh, do it. It's so good. I mean, not right now, but I'm, I'm Do it right it. now. <laughs> So I'm just gonna speed through. Go ahead. I'm just gonna. Um, so my other recommendations are Hyder, which was released in 2014. It's a retelling of Hamlet, which is really good, and it it's set in 1995 um, in Kashmir. So during that whole um, uh, 
era of violence in that area of the world. And Hamlet is the son of a politician, and he's been away at school, comes back, his father's dead, his mother is with his uncle, and that raises red flags in his mind, and then it proceeds from there. But it's a really um, good interpretation of the film. I think we briefly brought that up last week, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. We it had is really two good. movies. One was McBool, McBool. Which was um, the first one Simona talked about. Yeah, yeah we brought up a couple one. of your movies last yeah. week. I brought oh, we, were like, we were like, Simona mentioned these ones. Oh, okay, thank you. I yeah. love that shout out. And the last two, since I'm just speeding through, um, Ram Leela, which I have spoken about before, uh, which is another uh, retelling of Romeo and Juliet, um, very over the top, more so than the other two that I mentioned. And then this one is not really a Shakespeare retelling. But in my opinion, it could be like Romeo and Juliet, and it's Sanam Tari Kasam, which oh, is... Oh, I thought you were going to say Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> no. It could have traces. Uh, 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 uh. Um, <laughs> but, you know, then again, if you think about Buffy and Angel, Romeo and Juliet, two she found a way. should be together. <laughs> she yes! found a way. You put the opening, I just... <laughs> yes! Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> Twilight, too. Twilight, oh, yes! Right. We can talk about that. <laughs> we already brought that one in Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, we know we where that goes. That. <laughs> Could also be a little Macbeth with the craziness, a little bit of Hamlet. Maybe not, but definitely Romeo and Juliet. Um, so, yeah, so Sanam Tari Kasam is not specifically stated as, like, a retelling, but um, the main characters come from different worlds. So the main character, Sadhu, is part of this really religious, um, upright family. I don't know what their social class is, but they have some money and she falls in love with this near-do-well who has a criminal record because he murdered someone, but it becomes clear why he murdered that person. Through basically a series of misunderstandings, her father decides that she's dead to him and he literally has a ceremony that you have when a loved one has died. Um, and she has to leave. She ends up with that guy and he finds her a place to live. She's also a librarian, so shout out to the librarians. Um, and they basically fall in love, but it has a bittersweet ending. But it is a really nice film. The what music is the bittersweet ending? They all die. See, how is that bittersweet, yeah. though? Do they actually all die? No. Oh, okay. What's so, spoiler. The, yeah. So, what happens is, as with a lot, of, a lot of Hindi language films, you can't just leave well enough alone. They can't ride off into the sunset together. She ends up having this disease, which oh. she never knew she had. They are able to marry, but unfortunately she dies on her wedding day. And of course, as she's dying, that's when the father comes and like, I was a jackass, please forgive me. And of course, since she's a dutiful oh. daughter, she says, I forgive you, dad. She dies. Um, oh, the that's very Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah, the husband survives. Pretty he bad. ends up becoming a lawyer and he plants this tree and he and there's her name. It, it's not really a spoiler because in the beginning you see him approaching this tree and you okay. see her name on the plaque. So you already know something happened to her. Um, she becomes a tree. No, it's not. <laughs> so, um, so he eventually yeah. becomes a lawyer. Stop. He also patches up things with his father, and he goes to see her, and he says, you know, I won my case. Eh. Let's get married. But what I also love about the film is that, for the most part, he doesn't have a shirt that fits him well, and this actor is very attractive, so I wasn't complaining, really. It but um, like a friend I know. Yeah, it's like <laughs> buttons are popping out over his shirt. Like, the only time his shirt that's actually closed is in the ending when he's going up to the tree. <laughs> I have a similar problem with some of my shirts, but for <laughs> different reasons. <laughs> oh, no. You're but I'm sure you could work Oh, I know I'm beautiful. It's just... Get you some tree limbs. Yeah. But there's actually a scene when, like, when he approaches the tree, and I, I always laugh. The wind blows, and his, his jacket gets unbuttoned. And, like, I hate when that happens. Right? Is it slow-mo? Did John Wu come in yeah. with the doves? It is slow-mo, and the wind just blows, and he goes... And he has like, a bottle of champagne. He goes, thank you. And I'm like, thank you, You're too. Welcome. I think that wind. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's it. I'm done. Wind was on my side. <laughs> it's my turn. It's my turn. Um, Speed round. <laughs> so, um, I like warm bodies. Warm bodies. We were talking about this earlier before we started recording. It's um, essentially a Romeo and Juliet version of a zombie movie. But somehow the zombies are uh, getting better. They're becoming human again. Spoiler alert. Um, and it's like, but it's, it is Romeo and Juliet, but it's not Romeo and Juliet because they end up together at the end. I think it's, anything that's usually like Romeo and Juliet is like forbidden love kind yeah. of deal. Yeah. yeah. Like Twilight. Mono. I'm I not, mean, I'm not even going to go there, Simona. <laughs> Twilight episode coming up. <laughs> but, um, Yeah. I don't know that, like, 
That's about it for me with with other. I mean, I really loved um, Ophelia, which is oh, yeah. uh, I think came out in twenty eighteen, but it's not. It doesn't take place in a modern setting. It's in like I would call more like medieval Denmark, and it's about Ophelia and her story. But it's like. It, there's a twist at the end, and mm-hmm. I really don't want to say the twist. It's based on a book. We said the twist last week. Did yeah. we? Yeah. I thought we talked I about it. I don't remember it, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's on so Netflix, too. So. It is on Netflix, so you should check it out. But it's really good. And I mean, it's. I guess it's more contemporary in the sense of when it was made, not the not where it's the movie's actually set in. So, But that's about it. I can't think of anything else. It's okay. I, uh, I more or less got nothing contemporary, so I'm just going to shout out one of my favorite Shakespeare movies, Chimes at Midnight by Orson Welles, if you <laughs> notice a theme here. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, uh, it's sort of the Henriade, but from the perspective of Falstaff. Orson was obsessed with Falstaff, and he was like his favorite character in anything, and he plays Falstaff in the film, and it, it's just such a fun time. Amazing portrayal. The film is super alive and the cinematography is nuts, very handheld. Uh, that great scene from Battle of the Bastards, yeah. where it's following Jon Snow, taken directly from Chimes of Midnight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. That is, a, that is cool. a good moment. I, I'm not a... As you will learn when we eventually have our, our episode of Game of Thrones, I've never seen it, but I've seen enough of it where I can follow along. But I loved that moment when Jon Snow beats up... Um, Ramsey Bolton. Ramsey, Ramsey Bolton. Bolton in an epic fashion. I was rooting oh. for him. I was like, oh, yes. So Beat this guy to death. So satisfying. And the scene where they reclaim their home and they change the flags. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yes, yes. Beat, yes, it was awesome. It was Pretty a satisfying epic death. It was I liked so Ramsey. Satisfying. Oh, I'm not going to lie. He was such a jerk, but he was a good jerk. He, he was, was like, yeah. It, it's, <laughs> I want to love, I love to hate him. <laughs> well, I think that's, that's most characters in Game of Thrones were characters that you love to hate because they were so despicable. I love him. But, <laughs> I mean, to watch Game of Thrones and then to watch this other show, it was more of like a He's comedy. He's a sweet, called, I liked the bloopers called, um, I did, yeah. Called Vicious with Sir Ian McKellen and uh, Derek Jacobi. And he's in that show, and it's like, it's such a, jarring difference because he's like this shy lovable character um and and, and it's he and he's hysterical in it but then to see him in game of thrones it's like oh my god who are you i was also thinking about the scene where his father talks about his wife which i think like you know the dumbest conversations to have in front of some people <laughs> and he goes the way she's carrying he thinks it's a boy and i was like okay she's dying i said she is dead thank you dad it's like the way she's carrying like do you not read the room it's like mm. i like how sans is like like about to like she's like drinking she's all smirking and ramp she's like oh that's nice and then like he i said she's gonna die Spoiler, by the way, if you haven't seen the show. She dies. She needed to. That was loose ends. Uh, well, yeah. I'm off of their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Tree limbs for you. That was, <laughs> when you said that, though, like I really remember that. I remember watching, there was a clip of that, and that got me so grossed out because certain imagery I can't take, and I'm like, why does she have tree limbs? I think that's, that's There's okay a point if to you can it. I know, that but I wrote a paper about it. Did you? About that character, yeah. Uh, what, I were you, liked it. what were you saying, Lou? What were you uh, criticizing me about? No, no, no. no cri- I'm saying that's a good thing that, that you cannot handle imagery of trees going through a human being. That's a, oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the metamorphosis. Yeah, it's probably not a, uh, a, a badge of honor if, if, yeah. you, if you can. Like, I love it. I thought it was pretty. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful. I was like, I love macabre art, so I was into it. <laughs> well, well, I have a different sense of what no, I think but, beauty is. No, but honestly, like going with different sense of like beauty. Like I remember I saw this image in Gothic magazine, and it's a woman who's blindfolded, but she has nails like jutting out of her eyes. And I was watching. Ooh. I know. And I was like, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is so gross. And people were like, oh my god, the composition, the way this is shot, it is gorgeous, beautiful work. And I'm like, this is gross. Gives and I was, uh, new definition to hitting the nail on the head. Huh? Oh my god. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> uh, see, Ben would have appreciated that too. Ben no, would have. <laughs> no. Oh, shout out to Ben. Yeah. <laughs> 
Listen, um, it's something I've wanted to talk about for a while. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm not really going to dive into it. But HBO Max, Station Eleven. Um, Shakespeare? Shakespeare, mm-hmm. the whole thing. There's Shakespeare in it, you said. There's Shakespeare in it, and the entire story mirrors the play that's that they're performing at the time. Oh. It's uh, it really is incredibly so, dumb. You didn't tell so me wait, that. is each yeah. is each episode like a different Shakespeare play, or is it no. one play that it's? No, they do a few, a couple of different plays. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do uh, King Lear, Taming of the Shrew, and maybe one other one. Oh, okay. During the traveling symphony, and uh, but the each play kind of mirrors what's happening, and the last one is King Lear, and I mean it's just like. Well, now I'm more interested. In yeah, it's it really it really I thought it was very, really an exceptional show. Um, I don't know how other people really felt about it. I was really like blown away. By I'm gonna the show. watch it. I read um, I read the book. The yeah. book the book was hard to get through, especially because it's like a post apocalyptic world. So there's so they're traveling. They're traveling, sh- like yeah. theater company essentially. Yeah. A troop. And yeah, yeah thank you. Exactly. A troop. Thank it's you. A... See, it's such a simple word. Troop. Um, troop. And they're traveling around. It's basically they they're traveling to sort of keep morale up. And it goes flashes back to when the disaster occurred that actually sort of ended the world, so to speak. Yeah. But it was difficult to get through because I also an issue with like post apocalyptic books because I read The Road, and that well, book scarred as, as me dark for as life. It gets, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah your that, first yeah. exposure being Cormac McCarthy probably. Well, that not. sounds yeah. like a book I need to read. Oh Dude, yes, there's plenty of. It's very good. good. <laughs> there's actually, you know, um, uh, real quick. Uh, we did this. Uh, I used to do these these video series for Austining when we were in the pandemic, and um, uh, you know I I was started to get really bored with it, so I started <laughs> like just trying to be like weird, and so I actually like did this thing where I, I did that one part in the road where um, where he's like he spat a bloody phlegm in the road, and then he said, "What's the bravest thing you've done lately?" And he said, "Wake up this morning." And so, like, I I, reena- I kind of like reenacted that, and then I was like, well, at least ours isn't that bad, and st- like that stuff like that. Um, but uh, it's a funny book. Yeah. It's good. You would like it. Well, now I, I, well, now I think would... I want to watch Station Eleven once I'm done with Peaky Blinders. Yeah, really. I mean, it, I'll it, watch it. it was really exceptional. <laughs> And you guys should check it out. Amanda will definitely love the road. There's gore, there's cannibalism, there's violence yeah. of all sorts. It is a fun time. I'm reading well, uh, Simona, Tender if you ever want right to try giving so um, um, dystopian <laughs> universes <laughs> another <laughs> another shot, you should wa- uh, read uh, Veronica Veronica Roth's uh, Divergent series. It's really really good. Oh, like I. Re- See, that came out in a, in a, during a special time when everyone and their mother was making those kinds of stories. Like, it started off with the Hunger Games, and mm-hmm. then it's like... You mean the trope of two hot guys trying to pine after a really ordinary, boring do you, protag? But do you no. know what really bugs me about those novels? It's no. like the protag is like, I am so ugly. Divergent? I, so I have no Divergent about is better family. than the Hunger Games. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <gasps> yeah. Hot take. But it's like it's like it's like going back to Twilight, where like Bella is unexceptional. She's ugly, but she has two handsome guys trying to kill each other over. And then one what's guy's really technically not about, in love with her; he's just in love with one of the eggs. What's room. What's That's really <laughs> great about Divergent is that there's what? no love yeah, triangle. Like, oh, Jacob falls in love with her child. He's born, he's like, I turned out <laughs> like, <laughs> No, no, no. See, see, you're making oh. it sound so gross. The wolves in Twilight have But that's not what happens. It's not a love connection. It's kind of like, oh, like, it, it's called imprint. Look, we'll but go into Twilight But it's soon. not a love imprint, because the author was supposed to be... It's I don't not know. A, he's talking about wanting to, like... He's like, but I love her, and we're like... <gasps> razor blade? What's going on? <laughs> Okay, uh, fast run. I'm just going to name drop three movies. Uh, 2011, Coriolanus uh, with Ray Fiennes and Gerard Butler. Great rendition, military state. Awesome play. Awesome movie. Um, Cymbeline, which a lot of people don't talk about enough. Um, it's got Ethan Hawke, Ed Harris, uh, John Leguizamo. It's got a bunch yeah. of famous people. It came out in 2014. Ethan really Hawk's good. brought up again. Interesting. Yeah, he looks really emaciated in this movie. No. Um, and then The Merchant of Venice, which is a 2004 one, which oh, had, yes. of course, one of my favorites, uh, Jeremy Irons and Al Pacino. Um, another great, crazy movie, but it is very anti-Semitic. So yeah. there's the warning for that. Intentionally? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's the Merchant during of the Venice Renaissance time. Is... When... 
But a lot of the Jewish like, yeah, yeah. people moved to Italy, and it follows Shylock, and that's why you get the it's word not, shyster. It's not anti-Semitic because the producers was not right, the, 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 the whole play. But the they whole... were very anti-Semitic during that time. Yeah, they were. <laughs> it, it's literally, that's how you get the word uh, Shylock. The main character's name is Shylock. That's where you get the word shyster from. So wow, I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's Shylock's where it's pretty much just like a terrible like. He basically he's a he, it's because but then he gets a good speech at the end where he's oh. like, "If you prick a Jew, do they not bleed?" And oh, yeah, it's it's a good speech, but like the rest of the a pound of flesh it comes from that play. play. Yeah. Pound it's of like, flesh is from. But then again, oh, right. but then again yeah. none of the characters are like even Antonio is a major douche. Like, Everybody's I, not a good person in yeah. this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, like, everybody's kind of wronged. Whatever. Pound of flesh is the term that came from this play. I honestly recommend um, these three. They're lesser knowns. People don't tend to, especially Cymbeline. A lot of people don't go to that one. But honestly, it's basically a Snow White story, Shakespearean Snow White story. Yeah, I actually saw Cymbeline at the um, Shakespeare Festival in Boscobel in uh, Garrison. So anyone who's interested in actually hey. seeing... Mila Javokovic. Yeah. 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 Anyone actually interested in seeing a play, seeing a Shakespeare play should really check out the Shakespeare Festival. In I've Basketball. always wanted to since moving here. <laughs> well, then we should go. It's been hard to find the time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, speaking of finding it hard to find the time... The I Lion think... King also... Shakespeare adaptation. Hamlet. This is um, excuse yeah. me, it's partially a Shakespeare adaptation and also a ripoff of Osama Tezuka's original Kimba the White Lion. But, but did that's... that movie Whoa. have as good a music as it the It was King. considered better. I Not music-wise, yeah, that, that maybe. Was, that was a different <laughs> response. <Yeah. laughs> Look here. Yeah. I know what you've done, Disney. Fight, fight, oh, fight. My fight. goodness. Anyways, we're out of time. We hope that you guys, we hope we've encouraged you to at least, you know, check out some of these really good movies. Please check our collection. I believe we have some of these. I know we have Coriolanus because that's how I watched it. Nice. Uh, for my Coriolanus course. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, yes. I was very adamant on checking it out here. We have the plays. We have them in graphic novel form. We have them in the plays themselves. We have deep readers. Check them out. We look for, we want to help you. <laughs> we want to help you find them. I want to help you find them. <laughs> Happy birthday, Shakespeare. Happy birthday, Happy Shakespeare. Birthday, Happy Shakespeare. Birthday. Goodbye. Bye, Billy Shakes. <laughs> to be or not to be. <laughs> <laughs>